Troubled waters came my way The angry storm drew near I prayed for God to speak the words To make it disappear It seemed the waves would not obey The Master's call for peace Then the Lord spoke to my soul Reminding me he had control And said this time his words were meant for me Sometimes he calms a storm And sometimes he calms me Sometimes the storm still rages on But I feel the sweetest peace it's such a joy to know that my Lord knows just what I need. Sometimes he calms the storm and sometimes he calms me. Circumstance may overtake and bring me to my knees. I may feel I cannot cope with this life's trouble sea. I call on him whose voice can still much greater storms than me. His voice put peace into my soul, reminding me he has control. With one touch he calms the storms in me. Sometimes he calms a storm and sometimes he calms me. Sometimes the storm still rages on, but I feel the sweetest peace. It's such a joy to know that my Lord knows just what I need. Sometimes he calms a storm, sometimes he calms me. It's such a joy to know that my Lord knows just what I need. Sometimes he calms the storm, sometimes he calms me. You know, I won't lie, um, I don't really, uh, like I've only been here like twice or three times maybe, but uh, it kind of feels like home. Uh, you know, I was just a simple boy from Pensacola, Florida, you know, big city, growing up where your parents really would take you to church on Christmas and Easter, and that'd be about all you see. Uh, but then a lot of things really, really spiraled in a direction that led to uh, a, a deep subliminal change in not just me, but like the whole family. Uh, when I was a kid, my uh, dad passed away. He uh, passed away but before he passed away, the pastor at a local church had came and talked to him. And uh, he had told uh, me, my mom, the pastor, that he had, you know, passed away prior. As in, like, you know, he died, like, on the deathbed six times, seven times. I, you know, we couldn't count him. And he would look my mom and me dead in the eyes and say he didn't want to see those fiery gates again. That was something he did not want to go to. And uh, I got to say, that was, like, the first big sign that, you know, I had known something was real, something was there, you know. And then I get reassured not much later. I mean, the Lord works in mysterious ways. And it, it was very mysterious because for the longest time I thought it was, it was pain. It was, it, was, it was taken away, you know. With my, my dad was taken. You know, that's how I felt it was when I was a kid. And I grew up learning that it was different. Uh, you know, we see in the Bible the story of Job, a man where everything was taken from him everything taken to show his strength in the Lord, to show his faith, uh, to show that it had not withered through all the trials that he had been put through, the tests, the, you know, he lost his whole family, his farm, his livelihood. And, you know, when you read a story like that, it brings encouragement. You know, I thought I lost it all when I lost my dad. Well, it, it, it really hit when uh, my uh, mom's new husband's mom, she was like my step-grandma, you know, she was laying there, you know, she, she lived a long life, 98 years. She was laying there on her deathbed, you know, drawing her last breaths when she sits there and calls me the name my dad used to call me, my nickname. 
something only he would know. Because my mom didn't talk about my dad. I never told this woman about my dad or what he called me. And yet she sits there and calls out for meatball like my dad used to call me when I was a little four-year-old. And it was proof that, you know, to me that angels (laughs) really, really are there. You know, really looking down on you. That the Lord works in so many mysterious ways that, you know, sometimes a kid can't comprehend. But as you grow older, you learn that it was to put you on the right path, to keep you from going down a darker path that you could have possibly gone down. And, you know, I praise the Lord every day that I wake up and breathe the fresh air that I'm given as a gift, knowing that my dad made it there and that my step-grandma made it there. I'll call her my grandma even. And that, you know, not only that even, you know, I I sat there, my mom had some of the worst vision, you know, ever since I was a kid, two failed coke, uh, whatever you, uh, laser, you know, laser eye surgeries, two failed ones, you know, she could barely see. It, It degraded, I was in middle school. It degraded to the point where she was seeing black. She couldn't make out my face, couldn't see what her kids looked like. Well, I'll be darned if two months later, through a lot of prayer, she was restored her sight to where she could see her children again. No doctor, no medication was helping, but through solid prayer and commitment, my mama was able to see again. And that's a solid blessing. A lot of things that, you know, a kid like me don't normally get to witness. And as I watch that growing up, you know, I see that the Lord works in so many ways and changes so many things. It's all a plan he has laid out for you. And to me, it's been such a changing point, something that's opened up my mind to the point where, you know, you realize that you got to stay on the the straight and narrow. While it may be hard, while it may be troubling, and, and there will be obstacles thrown your way, all those obstacles are to show that you're getting stronger and that you can stand up here like I am today as a changed man, someone who's gone through enough to realize that I could have been down a darker road, a much, much darker road. But the Lord had something completely different in plan and in motion. And I just thank him every day for that. But um, yeah, that's that's uh, about it. But yeah, thank you guys for. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. Two places this morning, Genesis chapter number four and Matthew chapter number 23. Genesis chapter 4, Matthew chapter 23, we're at 3015 Upper Peachtree Road, Murphy, North Carolina, 28906. If you're in the local area, please come and be with us. UpperPeachtreeBaptistChurch.com on the internet, also local radio stations, WCNG uh, 102.7 and 101.3. Uh, WCVP 95.9 FM and WCVP 600 AM, Sunday mornings, 8.30, Tri-State Baptist Hour. Tune in and and be with us. Praise God. Genesis chapter number 4 this morning. Bear with me as I read a little bit, and then we'll be going to Matthew chapter 4, Lord willing, tying all this in. The Bible said in Genesis chapter number 4, beginning in verse number 1, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel, and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? And the voice, the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. 
And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. And if you'll look with me just over in uh, Matthew chapter number 23. Matthew chapter 23. Beginning in verse number 33. Jesus our Lord here is talking to the uh, scribes, the Pharisees, the hypocrite, uh, religious people. And this is what he said. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, son of Barcaeus, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. And I'd like to speak this morning, Lord willing, for just a few minutes on this subject. The blood of righteous Abel. The blood of righteous Abel. Abel uh, was a man born to uh, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve had sinned. Uh, the Lord gave them one commandment there in the garden, and they couldn't keep that. And if their name had been Derek and Charlotte, or Bruce and Jan, or Jeff and Cindy, or Larry and Diane, the results would have been the same. God gave man one commandment, and He broke that one commandment in the garden, and they sinned, and the, and the very first thing that that Adam did was try to cover up his sin with his own works. He sewed together an apron made out of fig leaves and uh, tried to cover up his nakedness with it. And you say, well, that sounds silly, but listen, people are still doing that today. They think that their works, their own good works, is going to cover their sin. Never has, never will. And Abel here was a keeper of sheep. And we see that Abel was a type or a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd layeth down his life for his sheep. Uh, our Lord, uh, praise God, was a keeper of sheep. He still is. And we are the sheep of his pasture. He went as a lamb dumb before the shears. And here we see the Lord Jesus Christ from the get-go. God told Adam that he couldn't cover up his sin with his works. Friend, you won't build on any foundation other than the foundation that's already laid, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. God forbid that we'd ever quit preaching the blood. It took the blood, it took the shedding of blood, and He made them coats of skins to cover up their sin. And God taught that from the very beginning. And He's still teaching that today through His Word. And Abel, listen, was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, verse 3, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. He had worked the ground. He had tilled the ground. Uh, he had watered it probably and, uh, and did the best he could to raise that up. And he picked the fruit and he presented that to the Lord. Friend, I'm going to tell you something. As soon as you pick the fruit, it starts dying. These banana pickers down there in Costa Rica and Panama and places like that, and they pick those bananas and as soon as they pick them, they start turning yellow. Yeah, that's right. And you need to get to that little overzealous man down there. I don't know who he is, but he likes to put a Chiquita sticker on every banana. He enjoys his job, I'm telling you. But they start, it starts rotting as soon as it comes off. Listen, I'm telling you, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. What does that mean? There's no forgiveness of sin. If you're counting on your good works... If you're th counting on, boy, I sure hope I'm on the right side of the fence with the Lord. And God's a good old boy and I am too. And listen, I'm just a good man getting better and I'm going to get in there. You'll miss heaven by a country mile. 
It took the blood. And here it says, And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of the flock, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. He didn't get the cull sheep. He didn't get the one that had one eye uh, that was uh, crippled up sheep. He didn't get the shag nasty sheep. He got the firstlings of the flock. I believe, praise God, Brother Mike, Brother Mike, I believe it was a, a lamb without spot and without blemish. He didn't have anything to do with the way that sheep turned out. He came from his mother's womb. Listen, a spotless lamb fit for sacrifice. He was the best of the flock and Abel took that and presented it to the Lord. And there was the shedding of blood. And he offered up a sweet sacrifice with the fat thereof. If you ever smell meat cooking on a grill and that fat cooking on that grill, it gives forth a sweet smelling savor. And God smelled that and He had respect to that sacrifice. And Abel came. And the way that he offered that sacrifice was by faith. Amen. He came by faith in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, hold your place right here and go forward and turn with me over to the book of Hebrews chapter number 11. And, uh, and listen to what the Bible had to say about Brother Abel and the way he offered this sacrifice. He came by faith, the Bible says in verse 4. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Listen. Abel came by faith in God's grace. He came by faith in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and he came and he offered that sacrifice uh, in faith of the grace of God. And listen, if you're saved this morning, you're saved by grace through faith. Amen. And that not of yourselves. It is uh, the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And he came and God had respect to that lamb that he brought. And listen, I love gospel songs and I love gospel singing. And Boy, we had a good singing last night here at the church. And if you missed it, you missed it because we had a good singing here last night. Smoky Mountain Gospel Singers and just the words of those songs, what a blessing they were to my soul last night. But I'm going to tell you something, I like that song, Oh, What a Savior. Oh, Hallelujah. His heart was broken at Calvary. Listen, uh, I believe that. Praise God. Uh, but let me tell you something. God didn't search through heaven to find a sacrifice that was worthy. The Bible says he, Jesus was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. God knew that He would create man. He knew that man would sin and He knew that His darling Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, would go to Calvary's cross, listen, and lay down His life for the sheep. The good shepherd would go and lay down His life for the sheep. Amen. God in His providence, He knew, listen, when, before the foundations of the world was laid, He knew that Jesus was the Lamb slain, praise God, for your sin. And for my sin. And if you're trusting in anything else, praise God, let me tell you something, you're on your way to hell this morning. You'll not be saved because of your good works. You'll not present an apron or anything else as your righteousness. Let me tell you something. You'll come by the way of the cross or you won't come at all. If you're not coming by His way, you're going your own way. I don't care how many thousands of people have bought into it. Let me tell you something this morning, praise God. I thank God for the, for the Bible, for the Word of God. And Charlotte and I were talking coming to church this morning, and I told her, I said, one of my greatest things that I fear God about is I pray, oh God, don't ever let me preach anything that's going to cause somebody to err. Don't let me preach anything that's going to send somebody the wrong way. Let me preach the Word of God. The pure Word of God. And don't let me say anything that's going to lead somebody in the wrong direction. Listen this morning. 
Abel offered, he, he brought the firstlings of his flock. By faith he offered that sacrifice to God, and it was well pleasing to him. Uh, listen, he said, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. Listen, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to come with an offering to, to God at the end of this thing, and they'll stand before the great white throne judgment, and they'll try to present some token of their own righteousness, and they'll say, but Lord, Lord, did I not in thy name do this? And did I not in thy name do that? And did I not do many wonderful works in thy name? And he'll have not respect to that sacrifice. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter number 9 that the priest of old used to go in once a year and, and sprinkle blood on, on the offering and on the holy place. Listen, but Jesus once and for all enter into the holy place not made with hands. He went into the very temple in heaven in the heart of the throne of God and went in and sprinkled His own blood once and for all for the remission of our sins. It took the blood. There's these cats running around down here. They ain't a bit more saved than the devil. They're making up versions of the Bible. Take the blood out. Take the word hell out of there. Take the virgin birth out of there. The devil was a liar from the beginning. And that's a lie. I don't apologize for that. Praise God. I want you to listen to me this morning. You get this straight. But unto Cain to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth. It made him mad. It made him very angry. Wroth means angry. Cain was angry at Abel. He was envy of his brother. The Bible says, uh, listen, uh, uh, wrath is cruel, anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? The reason the Pharisees, Pilate even knew, the reason the Pharisees brought Jesus up there and were crying, crucify Him, that Pilate could see that it was for envy's sake. Because the Pharisees weren't the bell of the ball anymore. Cain was wroth. Let me tell you something. If you plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're a born again, saved by grace, child of God, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you're trying your level best, Brother Jason, to live a holy, sanctified, separated life for the Lord Jesus Christ, the world will hate you for it. Jesus said, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Marvel not that the world hates you. Some strange thing happened to you. Listen, praise God. Uh, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. He said, if you were of the world, then the world would love his own. And here you see Cain and Abel, the very first family. They had two boys and one of them killed each other. Dysfunctional family from the get-go. Jesus said, don't think that I'm come to bring peace. I didn't come to bring peace, Jesus said. I come to bring division. Because he said there'll be five in one house, three against two, two against three. Why? Because some of them are pleading the blood and some of them are trying to get there by doing it their own way and doing it their own works. Let me tell you something this morning. Praise God. I, I love you today. Cain may very well have just been waiting for that opportunity to pounce on Abel. Waiting for him to slip up just a little bit. Get out there in the field by himself. You wait till I get that old boy out there in the field. You wait till I get him in a position where I can get a hold of him. I'll get him out there in that field. And I'll show him. And that's just what he did. But here, listen. God Almighty is speaking to Cain. Don't miss this. Look at verse 6. The Lord said unto Cain. The Lord Himself said unto Cain. Why art thou wroth? Why are you angry? Did you know that uh, uh, James chapter number 1 verse number 20 says that the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God? That's right. You say, I got an anger problem. I, I got a real problem with that. Yeah, you do. I'm going to tell you something. If you've got an anger problem, you need to get it under the blood. You probably need to be in this altar this morning. Look what it did for Cain. 
You one of these fellows that, or ladies that flies off the whole handle at nothing? You just lose your temper? The Holy Ghost can help you with that. Uh, amen. Because the fruit of the Spirit, one of the things that the fruit of the Spirit will do, it will give you temperance. You know what that is? That's self-control. Cain was getting ready to lose it. He was getting ready to, to blow up and lose control. Listen to what he did. The Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? You know what the Lord said to uh, Jonah out there that day? He said, Doest thou well to be angry? You really doing right to be angry? He said, You didn't have anything to do with this gourd growing up here. You didn't have anything to do with the worm eating up that gourd. And he said, there's a thousands upon thousands of people down there in Nineveh that can't discern between their right hand and their left hand. Listen, praise God. I'm going to tell you something. This anger is terrible. Anger will rev up your blood pressure. It'll rev up your heart rate. You start gritting your teeth and balling up your fist. And, it'll get, and I'm telling you, praise God, it'll take you on out of here eventually. That's for another day. If thou, if the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thou countenance fallen? Why you got the pooch mouth and the mullet grubs? And why are you got that frowny face going on all the time? Why can't you smile? Why can't you give the world a smile a little bit and tell them about Jesus? You know why? Because you're so blessed God full of yourself and so full of anger and your old frowny face and everything. You go around and look like you've eaten a green persimmon all the time. Yeah, that's right. Jesus can put some joy in your heart. Sure can. He can save your sin sick soul. He can turn your life around 180 degrees, praise God, and get you pulling in the right direction. The Lord said, be ye holy, for I am holy. He wants us to, to, to look like we're holy, and to act like we're holy, and to live like we're holy. Why? Because that's what God wants. Because He's holy. Oh, it upset Cain. He was jealous of his brother. What if Cain, when the Lord came to him and told him this, listen to what he told him, verse 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Do you see this? And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. You know what that means? He says, old boy, he says, you need to get a handle on your anger. Because if you don't, you're fixing to mess up. Now what if right then, now this is the Lord telling him. So people ain't changed none, by the way. God created man to be an intelligent being. Did you know that? He sure did. Me and Brother Jeff was talking about this the other day. He's talking about then how they built the pyramids way back thousands and thousands of years ago. The world would have you to believe that uh, a bunch of goo got to rubbing up against itself and out popped one leg and out popped another leg. He climbed up in a tree and fell out of the tree and walked across the street to J.C. Penney and got him a suit and went to preaching. Listen, that ain't what happened. God created Adam in his own image. Adam named all the animals. God didn't make a knuckle-dragging Neanderthal. Some weird-shaped head turned into a man down the road. Praise God, Brother Daniel, he made man in his own image. He made him to be intelligent. Adam and Eve, and then they had two boys, and Cain and Abel. Cain understood what the Lord was telling him, but nowadays... Preacher comes in, he preaches the Word of God. The Sunday school teacher stands and teaches the Word of God. Nope, thank you, I'll go my own way, I'll do my own thing. Same way Cain did. The Lord Himself told Cain, you better get a handle on your anger or something bad's going to happen. Listen, listen. <clears throat> Abel was a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. He sacrificed that which was pleasing to the Lord. And... Uh, Cain hated him for it. And so verse 8, what if, what if Cain, let me ask you something. What if when the Lord told him this, what if Cain had said, you know, Lord, you're absolutely right. Forgive me, for I have sinned. I'm sorry, Lord. And what if he had went over there and said, um, Abel, 
brother. I love you. And uh, can I trade you some of my fruits and vegetables for the best lamb that you've got left? Because I want to make a sacrifice to the Lord that's pleasing in His sight. Would you give me one of your lambs so I can go and sacrifice to the Lord? If He had done that, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. But instead, listen, his old stiff neck, hard-hearted pride it got in the way. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. First murder that took place. And there's been a lot of murders that's took place since then. And God hates it just as much now as He did then. And now, the Lord come to Cain. And the Lord asked him this question. The Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Well, that's a lie. He knew exactly where his brother was. He slew him and killed him. So he lied to God. First he committed murder and then he lied to God. The world, listen, we wonder how the world can be so mean. How the world can be uh, so terrible in these, in these last days. Listen, it's been going on since Cain and Abel. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination to Him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed the innocent blood. That's the first three on the list. And, and Cain here was guilty of all three. <coughs> His countenance fell. He had a proud look. He had hands that shed his own brother's innocent blood. And then he lied to God Almighty. And then listen how bad it got after that. I believe he sassed God. You know what sassing is? That's when you talk back to mom and daddy. They get to be about two years old. And they learn how to say, no mama. And this happens. They get that lip run out. And they start sassing. I tell you what, I sassed my mama one time at the kitchen table when I was a little feller at supper because I didn't want to eat something that was on the plate. About two seconds later, I was running through the house trying to get away from my daddy. And I run out of house. And I dove on the bed and I looked over my shoulder and he's a diving after <laughs> He said, you'll not say your mama with me sitting here, buddy. I'm telling you. Listen, he sassed the Lord. Listen to what he said. The Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? See this? Am I my brother's keeper? He's asking God. I don't know where he is. What are you asking me for? The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good, the Bible says. David said, If I ascend unto heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in the lowest hell, behold, thou art there. God sees it all. He knows it all. He understands it. Praise God. He knows past, present, and future. Listen to this. The Lord said to him in verse 10, And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Oh, that innocent blood was crying out to God Almighty. And Jesus said, You have slain people starting with the, the blood of righteous Abel. What made him righteous? He trusted God. By faith, righteousness was imputed unto him. For there's none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But what qualified Abel as being righteous? He had faith to offer up a sacrifice that was pleasing to God, which represented the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, amen. And uh, that was pleasing to God Almighty. And we're not going to get in in our own righteousness. We've got to be clothed upon with the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, plus or minus nothing, friend. And his blood cried out from the ground. Listen, when Jesus was hanging on the cross at Calvary, when my Savior cried and bowed his head and died, 
Oh, praise the Lord, He did it all for me. And as the blood came streaming down that old cross that day, and Jesus cried out and gave up the ghost, all creation cried out to Almighty God. Let me tell you something. When, the, when His blood went down and the earth received the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ from that cross, the sky grew dark. The earth shook. There was an earthquake right then. All of creation bowed its head and mourned because the darling Son of God had given up the ghost and died for the sin of all mankind. And listen to what happened. He said, The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Jesus told that bunch of religious hypocrites that day, them that thought that they were righteous and everybody else wasn't. That bunch of religious hypocrites that wasn't going to stand for old time Holy Ghost preaching of the Word of God and about Jesus Christ, that crowd right there. He said, you're a generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation to come, the Lord said. You've shed the blood from righteous Abel right on up to Zacharias who you slew at the, at the altar. Listen, I'm telling you, praise God. And then listen to what God told Cain. And now art thou cursed from the earth which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield uh, unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. I'm going to tell you something. Hell's hot. The lake of fire is hot. Eternity is forever. Praise God. And I preach the warning today. Come by faith to His grace and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ because He loved you enough to lay down His life and save you from your sins. You say, No, I'm going to go my own way. Your sin will be greater than you can bear. Let me tell you something. God had to set a mark on Cain so everybody that saw him wouldn't slay him. But you turn with me this morning. I want you to look with me over in the book of Hebrews. And then I'm going to hush. But I want you to turn with me this morning over to the book of Hebrews. We think about the blood of righteous Abel representing the blood of, of our righteousness, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter number 9 verse 24. I want you to listen to what the Bible said talking about Jesus. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands which are the figures of the true but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that He should offer Himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must He have often suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath He appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of Himself. Do you see this? One time. At the end of the world, He offered His own blood. And if you're trusting in anything else, and you're going to go and, and get behind closed doors and say that, listen, you're building on some other foundation and, and, and blah, 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 and, and yada, 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 and everything. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. That ain't the way. It's a straight gate. It's a narrow way that leads to life eternal. There's only a few that finds it. Sin will not stand in the presence of Almighty God. Flesh and blood will not stand in the presence of Almighty God. Heaven and earth itself will pass away at the great white throne judgment. What makes you think you're going to stand in your own righteousness? If you count the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as nothing, flip on over there to chapter 10, Hebrews chapter number 10. And listen to what the Bible says. Start in verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. That's what we're doing this morning. As the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Do you see the day approaching? Amen. Come to church. Pray, read your Bible. Come to church. Amen. Listen, get everything under the blood. Live according to the Bible as best you know how. Listen, praise God. 
For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. There's only one sacrifice for sins, and that's Jesus. That's the only way that you're going to come in. You're not going to find a sacrifice anywhere else. Let me tell you. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Listen to this, verse 29. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. The righteous blood of Abel was shed by an angry man who thought that he was righteous, who thought that his good works would get him in. He's, he was hated by his own brother. Why? Because he had faith in the blood. He had faith in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something today, friend. If we're preaching the Bible, if we're living for the Lord Jesus Christ, there'll be worldly people that's going to hate us. Amen. Yeah. We're living in the last days. There's a falling away. People drive right by this church right here. They go up and down the road. Like the brother said this morning, they've got all the comforts in the world. What do I need Jesus for? About a half a second after that heart quits beating. And you drop off into hell. You'll see what you needed Jesus for. And you didn't have to end up there. Because God loved you so much that He sent His Son to die on a cross for your sins. People are too content with a version of Jesus. With a version of the Bible. With a version of, listen, Christianity. As long as it will fit in their lifestyle. Yeah, I'll, I'll come. But, but listen, I want Jesus on my terms. And I want the Word of God on my terms. You know, it's gotten so bad, uh, brothers and sisters. That there's people out here that are blatant sodomites. Homosexuals. They say, it's okay. I can be a homosexual. I can be saved. I can live like hell and the devil. And, it, and it's all right. Because the world says it's okay. Amen. This Bible don't say it's okay. Amen. Sin is sin just like it was then. Whether it's murder, lying, bearing false witness, coveting your neighbor's wife homosexuality, whatever that is. Sin was sin then, it's sin now, and Jesus died to save us from our sin. Here's the thing. We're all sinners. There's none righteous. No, not one. All is sin comes short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. But he, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with all thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Jesus put it this way. Repent and believe the gospel. Except a man repent, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Except you repent, you'll all likewise perish. That's the word of God. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved.